Good morning. You got to turn your mic on. Thank you, Kyle. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Sunday School on today. Um, if you are here in the sanctuary, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing and liking the Sunday School um, feed on today, that would be wonderful. For those of you who are joining us via um, Facebook Live, are we live? Because I don't even show that we're we live. We are live. Okay. Um, for those of you who are watching us Facebook via Facebook Live, if you wouldn't mind um, sharing, liking, and sharing the Sunday School lesson, we are um, the Sunday School class on today. Uh, we are so glad to um, be able to teach during the month of December. This is Pastor West, but this is not Pastor Kelsey West. This, this is, is the real this, Pastor this, West. This boy here. Yeah, I'm serious. Somebody pray for me. He is impersonating. Um, just, just pray for this child here. Um, he is sitting in for his dad. He is, uh, while his dad is um, away, we're going to pray in, and then we're going to get into our lesson uh, so we can be timely and done by 1030. Dear God, we come before you just to say thank you. We thank you for bringing us yet this far throughout this day. We thank you for our 8 a.m. service and we thank you for the Sunday school service that we're about to have now. We ask God that you continue to reveal yourself to us through your word. Give us a greater understanding of who you are and who you desire us to be. In your son Jesus name we pray. We give thanks. Amen. 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 So Go ahead. Let me Kyle. start. Go ahead. All right, y'all. So I'm excited to be here. I want us to know that uh, this is going to be a pretty um, interactive class. Uh, we're going to have some fun within these next 30 minutes. Um, today, we're going to be talking about um, one of my favorite stories in the life of David. Um, I, I love this this word that I'm going to shout. Um, and I'm not going to, I really think it's more than just a word. But I believe that the holidays really give us an opportunity to never forget the promises we make. Um, and sometimes we, we, it's very easy for us as humans um, to make a promise and then forget that thing and be like, oh, man, you know, I, that was then. Or, you know, uh, I know I said that, but I'm not going to really honor that. And so today we get to look at the power of honoring something. Because sometimes, so many people know, especially in church and ministry, you can get um, exalted, you can get um, elevated, you can have something happen for you. And if you're not careful, people that get, you know, a better platform or they grow in influence, they change mm -hmm. for the worse. Mm -hmm. um, and they find themselves not being able to operate with humility, not being able to operate with kindness, with grace, with love, with compassion, because they feel as if they are just the next thing um, as great as Christ. And so it says, so today we're going to be looking at um, 2 Samuel 9. So I want us to go to 2 Samuel 9. And I think this is going to be powerful. I'm in the New Living Translation. What translation are you in? I am. Um, I'm in the Living Bible. Okay. And That's cool. So um, let me go ahead. Let's start with reading the scripture and Let's then we can do the. We don't have to do that. Let's just read the scripture. We'll talk about it. Okay. Let's start with reading the scripture. Uh, 2 Samuel verse uh, chapter 9, verses 1 through 12, I believe it is. Um, one day, David began wondering if any of Saul's family was still living. For he wanted to be kind to them, as he had promised Prince Jonathan. He heard about a man named Ziba, who had been one of Saul's servants and summoned him. Are you Ziba? The king asked. Yes, sir, I am, he replied. The king then asked him, is anyone left from Saul's family? If so, I want to fulfill a sacred vow by being kind to him. Yes, Ziba replied. Jonathan's lame son is still alive. Where is he? The king asked. In Lodabar, Ziba told him, at the home of Mashir. So King David sent for Mephibosheth, Jonathan's son, and Saul's grandson. Mephibosheth arrived in great fear and greeted the king in deep humility, bowing low before him. But David said, don't be afraid. 
I've asked you to come so that I can be kind to you because of my vow to your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land of your grandfather, Saul, and you shall live here at the palace. Mephibosheth fell to the ground before the king. Should the king show kindness to a dead dog like me, he exclaimed. Then the king summoned Saul's servant, Ziba. I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family, he said. You and your sons and servants are to farm the land for him, to produce food for his family, but he will live here with me. That's right. Ziba, who had 15 sons and 20 servants, replied, Sir, I will do all you have commanded. And from that time on, Mephibosheth ate regularly with King David as though he were one of his own sons. Mephibosheth had a young son, Micah. All the household of Ziba became Mephibosheth's servants, but Mephibosheth, who was lame in both feet, moved to Jerusalem to live at the palace. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, how do you want to start this? Go for it. I think we are in a time where we really have an opportunity to demonstrate the love of Christ in just an awesome way. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I love about this passage of scripture, and if I was preaching, I would talk about how to be nice to a lame person. Um, because there's a lot of people in, these, in today's world, you know, I don't know why people continue to say that we're moving out of a pandemic. We are still in a pandemic. Um, very much so. They keep finding variants. I think they say the Omicron has a sister. Um, <laughs> like that, that is, that is wild to me. Like, you know, we, we just got family trees of uh, viruses. It's pretty wild. And so when you think about that, um, there are some people right now who really seriously, they battle with worry. They battle with fear. They battle with regret. And so when they hear certain things on the news when they see certain things in general it sends people into a frenzy is there anybody here like that you know that just be honest i can't watch the news i'm gonna be honest i can't watch the news i'm one of the people i can't do it it bothers me i, I can't look at it's some people i'm gonna be honest with you especially church people why y'all like to share news articles down your timeline timeline already be depressed and then y'all add a news article to it just make everything even worse and so i'm one of the people i cannot do it i have to i have my day consists of sports consists of fashion um and hip-hop and and money you know <laughs> especially money i got to keep my eyes on the prize and so uh <laughs> you know the thing is i have learned that we have to keep ourselves around things that will keep us sane i'm giving you that because mephibosheth is is like the modern church person he comes from royalty, but he is far from it now because he's lame. Mm -hmm. He was not born lame, but he is lame. I'm going to give you that. You have to always remember, everyone has a story. And if you are not careful, you will treat a great story like a sad ending before it can actually finish. Mm -hmm. Before it plays out. Before it plays out. Mm -hmm. And many people, they see the outer they see the current state a person is in, and the first thing they do is they start to treat them as if they are what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. You have to remember, this is a life. We are in the midst of living out a story. Mm -hmm. We are a part of the story of God. The creation story is what Moses called it. And so when it comes to that, we have to analyze this from the standpoint of, and I want to ask us this question just to start this off. How many times this year can we be honest and say, I could have done better at how I analyzed people? Can we be okay? Y'all not gonna talk. Can we, can we be a little more vocal? I How many see, times? I see it. I see a hand. We see a hand. Okay, because come we on. We have a hand in the back. Yeah. We're gonna get that. We're gonna get that person a, a gift card. I like that because I like go. people that talk. <laughs> Praise God. Card. Here, you do your thing. Okay. Here, come on. Let's get Is her on. Helper here. My helper's not here today. I need a helper. Come be my helper. Um, I could have done better. 
uh, I work in the casino industry and I am up front. Mm. So with the pandemic and with everything, as soon as people approach my table, I have already judged them. Yeah. I have already said, you know, um, people, it's not only that it's, COVID, people still get colds, people still have allergy. So they sit at the table, if they sniffle too long, if they cough, if they sneeze, I'm already like, okay, you got you got two you gotta more. go. Yeah. And you got two more and you gotta go. You know, I'm waving down, I have waved down my supervisors behind me and I'm like, hey, hey, hey <laughs> watch this them. Is too, <laughs> this is too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They gotta yeah. go. You know, um, even with the pe- way people dress. Yeah. You know, in the casino industry, I mean, you prejudge. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I will say that I'm guilty. Yeah. And, and I love that transparency. Please make sure she gets her gift card. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Trina, she's trying to give you your gift card. You're going to miss your blessing. <laughs> Praise God. No, and that's real. And I love that honesty. Is there anybody else who can be honest about that? Listen, I could have done better at how I analyze some things. Mm-hmm. Because the truth of the matter is, is I, I, I try to tell people that we got somebody else over here. I, I try to tell people, you don't know that, you know, you really are the only Christ everybody sees. Mm-hmm. There is a world of people that you are called to that you don't even realize is watching you. They are watching your every move, no matter what you do, no matter how you handle stuff. And it is crazy the things people will tell you about you that you didn't even think people notice. Come on. You can bring your mask down. Mm-hmm. There was a situation that I had in jail. Mm-hmm. But you do have a microphone, so put it up so we can hear you. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? We just like yeah, to play. Go Come ahead. on. Okay. And it was a situation, and I got mad, and I judged this person saying that they were hard, and I, didn't, I was really angry with them. But then when I had to go back and look at the situation. My God. Yeah. And that and that person had prayed for me or whatever and I was like, uh uh-uh. uh. That's that's how I was feeling mm-hmm. was out of order. Mm-hmm. And I had to say and I had judged this person before, you know, because of the situation. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I felt that I wasn't right. Yeah. And I had to go back and I had to ask God to forgive me. Yeah. For judging that person like that. Yeah. And not really looking at them for really what they are. Because they really was they was right, and I was wrong. Mm. But I took it. I, I, That's transparency. I love that. And I, I think where you're going is right where we need to be. Because if you know the life of David, you will know Jonathan's father, Saul, mm-hmm. hated David. Mm-hmm. So easily, in the midst of David and Jonathan's relationship, David could have said, hey, man, I know I'm supposed to be king someday. I'm going to make you pay for what your daddy did. How many of us are guilty of, you know, you may not get along with a certain person, so you treat their whole family like they are that person? Or you may not all the way, hey, TT, you may not all the way um, like a, a certain coworker, so you treat that coworker and all of their friends. Oh, are you on their team? Are you on their side? Go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going we gonna to build this war that shouldn't even exist, and I'm going to stop being Christ like. Because I feel as if I need to make a point to prove you're my enemy. So David, he has a responsibility because he is God's man to make sure he honors the promise he made. So watch this. He has covenant relationship with Jonathan. Jonathan is the seed of a man that wanted David dead. Do you know how mature you have to be? To say, I'm going to give you everything you should have had and then some, just off of the strength of our friendship. This man had me hiding out. This is just a background for this. Y'all do majority of the Psalms were written in paranoia, right? So when David is talking about, you know, you are my, my, my shepherd and I shall not want you making me to lie down in green pastures. You leave me beside the still waters. Those are actually reminders 
while he is fighting for his life. They're one of my favorite passages of scripture in the Psalms. David says, you kept me from the creeping, uh, the, the creeping creature uh, of the earth and you kept me from the beast of the sea. Because one of the things that David would have to do was, was when he was running away from Saul, he would have to hide out in different places, sometimes travel by boat just to get away from the threat that Saul had on his life because he was jealous. Saul, you are royalty, and you're jealous of me, and I'm royalty too. Royalty is never supposed to feud with royalty if, if you study the Bible. And so one of the things that happens is, is David forms a relationship. He builds this beautiful thing with Jonathan. Many people reference their kiss and things of that nature. It was a covenant brotherhood. The kiss in the Old Testament is not like the kiss today. It, it, it is actually very beautiful. It was two men that shared a kiss, and it wasn't like, you know, some romantic, you know. No, it was, bro, you my guy. I rock with you. I love you. You have held me down. You went against your daddy to make sure Christ and his message could come through the lineage. And so when it comes to this, now you have Mephibosheth, who now is in a position to reap the benefits of a promise that was that was made to God. One of the things that I want to stress to us this morning is that we have got to make sure we do not renege on what we said to God we would do. We live in a time where people make false commitments for fun. So God, I promise you, I'm going to serve you if you do this. So God does it, and then the first thing we do is the opposite. God does something for us, and the first thing we do is forget he did it. We start taking all the credit for it. We start acting as if things happen on our own doing, as if God has not been the one making ways. I tell people all the time, listen, I, I, I do the things I do because I, I surrender to God. I'm a young man, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm not a, a man that, that really struggles because I surrendered. And I think what many people need this morning is to renew their surrender to God. David had surrendered his life. He was not perfect, though. Hear me. Because we have made it appear as if in order to surrender, I have to be perfect. That's not the case. And so I, really wanna, I wanna ask this question. How many of us in here struggle with perfection? We feel like everything just has to be done, just perfect, 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 perfect. If it ain't done perfect, I, I'm, 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 yeah, I didn't fail. I didn't fail. Can we be, can, can, you mind sharing? Come on and share. Come on and share. Good morning, y'all. But being a preschool, a, a preschool teacher, I got that problem all day long. Woo! And if my board is not right, I got, I tear the whole board down. Oh, no. I cannot do it. My, my whole class has to wait until I get finished. Wow. And, and that's a struggle for me. It's, it's a hard struggle. Hard struggle, gotcha. I try every day to, to get better, but it's a hard struggle. Understand. Understand. Anybody else? Perfection. Can, can, can you share? Can, can she with us? Right here. Right here. I like, and I love your mask. I like it. Right here. Go Right there. Yep. Um, in my line of work, I do child investigation. Mm. That already in an, in itself mm -hmm. is stressful. Mm -hmm. But when you, on top of that, try to put perfectionism in something that is not perfect, yeah, I see. I am learning to take to de to take the stress off of myself. Mm -hmm. that besides the job that I'm also adding yeah. to myself, yeah, I have come in this season to learn. I can't do it all. Yeah, I can't help. <clears throat> I can help you if you want to help yourself. That's right. And I'm not going to take on burdens for you that you don't want to take on for yourself. That's right. That's right. So it, it, it's hard being a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a new supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a stretch in itself. The way you said supervisor just made me want to pray for you. Yeah. <laughs> do. I mean, we're all in a learning situation but yeah. and i don't mean to sound cocky but it's one thing i know i can do is write that's mm -hmm. right i know i can write mm -hmm. and for the past three and a half years i've never had my work turned back wow everything mm. that i turn in from a court report to my notes is getting turned back and i'm like jesus jesus 
my girl. <laughs> she, yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, I have to learn that, okay, you can't be perfect mm -hmm. at everything. Mm -hmm. Even though you're getting your stuff turned back, what is it that they're still trying to teach you mm -hmm. throughout all of that? Mm -hmm. So that's what I say. It, it's a work in progress. I love that you said that because teachability is something that is becoming a lost cause. We have people in this time that cannot be taught new levels or new ways of surrender. Please bless her. That cannot be taught new levels of surrender because they refuse to be teachable. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Right here, and then I'm going to come to you. She's next, Denise, right here. Front row. She'll be next. Mm -hmm. Please state your name also. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sister Truett, Mary Truett. God bless you. Good morning. I just like to uh, kind of piggyback off of what that young lady just said when it comes to perfection. Mm -hmm. I used to struggle with perfection. But then one day somebody uh, just spoke to my heart and told me that, you know, there is a beauty in a flaw. Mm. And it reminds us that we are not perfect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you may have a thing, something that you might have purchased. I it could be anything, but there may be a nick on it. Mm -hmm. You have to tell yourself, hey, that's not the end of the world. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not the end all be all. There's there's a beauty in imperfection. Yeah. So it will free you from being a perfectionist because mm -hmm. we can't always be perfect, but we can just do our best mm -hmm. to, to, to uh, be our best. That's right. That's right. Come on, LaQuinta. Mm -hmm. I am LaQuinta. Mine kind of ties into both that last question on how can you do better in the perfectionism? Mm -hmm. It's not just perfectionism. It's my work ethic. I expect other people to work like I do. Who um, expecting others to be you? And it, it, it'll create <laughs> havoc in your life because when you need help, you'll just do all everything, everything yourself, yourself mm -hmm. because people don't work like you. They don't think like you. If I ask you to volunteer, I can't spend all day Telling you what to, to you. do. That's right. I That's could right. just do it myself. Mm -hmm. And I it, it took my husband to tell me, babe, they're not going to work like you, so stop expecting them. Some of them you have to hold their hand. Some of them you have to give instructions. They, they don't just see that it needs to be done, and they're going to do it. And just to help myself, once I stop expecting people to work like I do, um, it just – relieved a lot of unnecessary stress and still allowing people to help instead of wanting to perfect it all yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's really good. I, I have that struggle. Um, I don't hold hands, though. Uh, we'll come to you. I don't hold people's hands. It's, you know, I, ex I have this expectation that I've told you what needs to be done, do it the way that I want it to be done, and no mistakes. I've explained how it should be done. Do it. And and I, I'm like that with my kids. I'm like that with myself. I'm like that at work. Like how many times do I have to tell you? You know, just that and that's and I've had to learn though to stop expecting perfection. And my new word is do it in excellence. Excellence. It may not be perfect perfect as far as what I consider to be perfection, but when you're doing it with the right heart and mind, you're doing it in excellence. And so that'll help a lot of people. So when there are flaws, it's not, it, it's not the flaw that you're focusing on, it's how the person did it. It might Effort. be messed up, but they did it in excellence. And, that's, and that, that changes a whole lot, and it does. It relieves a lot of stress from you. From me, it does. Yeah. It relieves a lot of stress because I'm like, yeah, you didn't do that right. Yeah. You know, in the back of my mind. And so I end up just, it's hard to work for me sometimes. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's hard to. No, I'm saying oh, I'm okay, green. I'm, I'm green. like, what you looking no, at? Yeah, we can I'm talk green, about this yeah. when we get off the yeah. camera. No, no, no. It's hard to work for me sometimes because I do. I have that, why didn't you do it this way? It should have been done this way. I show you know, and so it is. We have to we have to be delivered from that. There's nothing wrong with the flaw. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Come on, Go ahead. Come on. When you were talking about perfection, and I was listening to everybody as they were talking about it, it's like it. 
Well, state your name. State your name for us. They want to know who you are. Tell Come on, you got to tell your tell name. Us your name. You got to tell your name. I'm Denise. Okay. Hey, Denise. Where you from, Denise? Originally from New York. But... Uh, really? I, I, I could kind of hear that. Mm. Because I felt that I wasn't good enough. Wow. Because I had to be perfect. Yeah. And then I finally realized, my, my sister told me, she said, God accepts you as you are. And he will make the change in you. Mm. So you can't, you're not going to be perfect. You're not without sin. And I thought that, you know, you had to be perfect. And you wouldn't believe, I didn't even take communion because of that. Because wow. Of that. Wow. To another thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's real. Can I share this with y'all? I, I hope you guys are understanding. Um, I hope you guys really understand what I'm about to say. The reason why I had us deal with perfection is because if David had expected perfection out of the King Saul, he would have missed the opportunity to display honor to Mephibosheth. Many of us are dishonoring our commitment to God because we have a poor view of our assignment from God. That's true. So what happens is, is God will say, this is what I desire you to do. We'll say, God, I'll commit to it. And because the people we're called to don't act the way we expect them to act, the first thing we begin to do is dishonor them. Mm -hmm. Now you think dishonor and not, most people in today's world just thinks dishonor is just in the vocal thing and, you know, talking bad about them. No, nah, it, it, it can sometimes show up in you not going to give your full effort because you know they're not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have a good attitude because you're already expecting a bad attitude from that person. Mm -hmm. Or you're not going to get to know that person for yourself because you've heard about everything else, but because they have the position, we're going to fake and act like they are something. You know, They're like, can, can we be honest about that? That is a real thing. There are people in this church who swear they know me, don't know me from a, a, a can in a store, but, but, but just swear they know me because of other people's experiences that may not even be all the way true. And so when you have, you have to get to know people for yourself, this is the thing, though. Maturity will show you that even when I get to know you, if God told me to serve you, I'm still going to do it. David knew so. Yep. Who's to say Mephibosheth isn't lame now because of Saul's actions? Mm -hmm. He still honored him. Still yeah. stayed postured. Mm -hmm. Still chose to be a blessing to that man. Still chose to remain in connection with Jonathan. I'm trying to help us understand that one of the greatest things you can do is refuse to stoop to other people's levels. Mm -hmm. And that's really good because in this, um, David had every right to... Um, to kill Mephibosheth. Every right. He had every right to kill Ziba because they were a part of Saul. They were a part. They were from Saul. And so when somebody takes, um, when a kingdom gets a new king, if that king desires to just annihilate everybody that was associated with that leadership, they could. But David didn't. He didn't. That's the beauty of, that's that's the beauty. The beauty of this. He didn't. He had, he had every right to when he asked, is there anybody left? And, and when he was told Mephibosheth, he could have said, kill him. Kill him so there would be no remnant of Saul left. Watch this, Mom. Mm -hmm. What could you be if you got delivered from revenge? Yep. Every vengeful thought you have. Mm -hmm. For David to ask the question means he already knew the answer. That's right. He spent time with God. He knew there was somebody left. He knew there was somebody. He's the king. Mm -hmm. He has access to all the records. That's right. Is there anybody left mm -hmm. from Saul's lineage? It's more of a, you know, rhetorical. it's a rhetorical statement. Mm -hmm. See, I think majority of us would be better Christians if we stopped thinking people have to suffer like we did when they caused us pain. That's right. That's good. That's good. 
I hate that you did this to me. So I'm gonna make sure you feel this energy because we got this thing, especially my generation. I'm gonna match your energy. <laughs> Keep that same energy, boo. Keep that same energy. Are you sure? Because that's bad for your health. Who wants to go to sleep at night knowing I got to match your level of ignorance? Yeah. I have to match your level of suffering. Because the reality of it is, is, is you probably only acted that way because somewhere in you, there's a level of brokenness I was never meant to see. That's right. Maybe I'm the person that was supposed to inspire the change in you, but because I'm trying to match your energy, I'm breaking myself down even more. God says he wants us to rise above the foolishness. And begin to see things the right way. I think I had a hand over here. Or were you just amen? Would you just amen or you had a hand? Okay. Come okay. on. Come on. Where, do we, where are we at? We at. I don't I know. Just, we just, just, we just flowing. In. I'm sorry. I had All right. to leave. So Something listen. Happened. I just came in. Listen. Where are we at? He goes to search for Mephibosheth. Mm -hmm. He has them go search for him. I want us to go to verse 7. Verse 7 says, don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. Mephibosheth bowed respectfully and exclaimed, who is your servant that you should show such kindness to a dead dog like me? I want you to think about this. Mephibosheth is speaking from the perspective of what he's dealing with. He refers to himself as a dead dog. A dead he's dog lying. is a dog that really can't walk. Mm -hmm. What good is a dog that can't walk? What good is a dog that can't bark? It's without its a, it's mm -hmm. without identity. So Mephibosheth is an is an identity he is an identityless man who is struggling with being in the presence of royalty. Can I I want to share this with you? Kindness erases toxic perspective. Mm -hmm. When we are kind to people, it makes people reevaluate how they, they treat are. themselves. Right. So when I come to church and I treat Kendall as if Kendall is everything that he thinks about himself, how can he see Jesus or feel free to worship? That's an example. I don't treat Kendall like that. I actually love Kendall a lot more than most people would probably know. We talk about a lot of stuff. That, really, think about that the next time you eyeball somebody when they come to church. Mm, look at them. Mm, look at you. Mm -hmm. I use um, I use um, Tiani um, as as an example. Um, I always tell people Tiani is not disabled. There is nothing wrong she with is Tiani. Perfectly fine. Um, she's fine, you know. Let Tiani jump rope, cause her mom says she can't jump rope. Tiani can do whatever she wants to do. You keep saying what she can't do, she'll never do it. She will never do it. And you know, and I I tease Tiani, and you know, cause Tiani's Tiani's claw, cause yeah. that is a claw. Have y'all ever felt that? <laughs> that is so that wrong. That is a claw, and it hurts if she grabs hold to you with it. And I and I always I tell Tiani, I said I'm right there with you. You don't have to be the only one with your hands like that. I can make my hand do the same thing just so you don't have to be by yourself. And I tell her, I said, you know, I can only do that in front of certain people because people will, will look at her and say, well, that's not right. That's not fair. You making fun. No, no. I'm letting her know you're not by yourself, boo. If, you're, if, if you like this, I'm like this. We going to rock it out together. We, we riding together. And that's, that's what we need to do when people come into the church. They look a certain way. They sound a certain way. You're not by yourself. Because really, when you get to know me, I'm a certain way. My hand may not look like this, but it might be something on my back that you can't see. It might be something in my heart that I haven't, I haven't exposed yet. And so here we have Mephibosheth feeling sorry for himself when in fact he's royalty. That's right. How we got how we doing it, Tiani? He's royalty. But he's not carrying himself as if he's royalty. Now, we could assume that he's worried and he knows this whole thing about David can kill me. We could assume that's the case, but even in that. Mm -hmm. 
You know who you are. You know who you are. You are God's daughter. You are God's son. You are royalty. Royalty to God. And so you walk around, you walk around with that. I know I'm somebody. Yep. I know I'm important to somebody. And so when I walk through that door, I'm expecting you to know who you are. So when we both connect, we know who we are together in God. Can you imagine what church would be like if we allowed people to be confident? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why in the African-American context, we have to feel as if we have to stoop below and you don't. The standard God gave. I, I, I used to, I almost wrote a post this week, but I just decided to just divorce every person that ever told me I was wrong for being confident. Because, you know, as a PK, people will tell you, you don't have the right to walk around. And people used to say rude things. You know, people used to curse me. They would say, Kyle, you just so arrogant. You just so full of yourself. And I'd just be like, what? If you knew secretly what I was battling, I don't even have the time to be arrogant because I'm learning how to like who I am. Right. And because you suffering as a grown person and your life is still bad to this day because of the curses you tried to, because the Bible does say, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. People harm me as a child and their lives look like the promise God said he would keep. And I'm saying that to say, you've got to learn to let people feel loved by God. That's I am made in the likeness and image of God. Right. Why in the world would I walk in here with my head down low? Why in the world would I want to walk in here and not think I'm cute? I look like him. That's right. You look like him. You should feel okay. You should feel attractive. You should feel something about yourself that says, hey, I'm beautiful. Because can I tell you something? When you are confident with who you are, that actually makes you a better worshiper. That's right. It actually makes you a better praiser. It makes the environment even more suitable for the presence of God. Because what good is you coming to church if it's a room full of insecurity? That's right. How can God move in that? You afraid to open up your mouth? You afraid to lift your hands? You afraid to, to bow? You afraid to, to do anything? Mm -hmm. Sister, I'm going to use you for an example. Sister Cleveland, she got up to do the announcements like four months ago during a Women's Day service. Matter of fact, no, it was a church anniversary. Mm -hmm. The woman of God was so full. Now, I understand because I, 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 I fellowship with a lot of my friends are from the Pentecostal experience. I actually consider myself to be pretty Pentecostal myself. And the woman of God was very full of the presence of God. She was just ready to praise God. And the room was just looking. And I was just looking at the room because how dare you Sit in here and act like this person is wrong for wanting to come to where she should actually be able to give God praise. And you want to come in here and sit reserved and hold your Bible and just look as just, just, just mm -hmm. bored as possible. Mm -hmm. You're just boring. Open up yourself and allow yourself to step into the joy. Because the joy of the Lord is where the river of God is. And many of us are not experiencing the presence of God because we won't divorce the idea that I have to be broke down. Y'all pray for more money, but don't divorce the ideas that say, I got to be poor. I got to look poor. I, gotta, I can't come in here. I can't look good. No, you come in here and come stepping because it's going to make worship even better. It's going to make the, the, the family nature of a church even better. Because if you confident, I don't have to be worried or in your business. I can intercede for you now. I can be compassionate towards you. Because what are you going to do to me? I'm confident in me. You can't take nothing from me. That's right. I was having a conversation this weekend with a pastor friend of mine. And he was telling me a story about how he had to let somebody go. Because somebody in his church was afraid that their wife liked him. I said, what? He said, yeah, man, I had to let him go. Because number one, I got, a, I got my own wife. Why would I want yours? And these are the type of things people come to church with. They don't come to worship. They come to see who's going to try to steal what they have. And if you were more confident and what you have, 
you would not be paranoid about the potential threats that other people don't even know exist. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. You've got to get your perspective right. I am. Uh, do you see yourself as a dead dog? No. Come on, Lisa. Yep. So let your words be few. You got to be careful what you say. say. Too much activity gives you restless dreams. Too many words make you a fool. And then at four, it says, when you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through for God. Take no pleasure in food. Keep all your promises you make to him. And then it goes on to give you a woe about it. Mm -hmm. But it's just like you were saying, if you keep your promises to God, you stay if with God with your That's right. And so if we exercise in reminding ourselves what God, what did God did, say, then I don't have to worry about That's, That's right. right. I don't worry about foolish things. I don't have to be perfect for you mm -hmm. according to what your standards are. That's perfect. right. Per perfection for him is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. and so when I honor him with the perfection of who he is, then I'm okay. I don't worry about how you feel about me. I don't worry about me coming in and you're not right because I'm still okay. Mm hmm. That's very true. Mm -hmm. Did anybody else have anything on that? Come yeah, on, Mother Joyce. Well, it's, it, I wanted to go back to say that David had said to Saul that he was a dead dog. And so I just wanted to say, you know, he compared himself to a dead dog. Mm -hmm. And so when he went to take some of Saul's people in. My God, he saw himself. He yeah. saw himself. Well, you are on it. No, that's true. Cause we don't we don't yeah. think about the things we say sometimes, nope, and it's not until you mature and have to see you someday. I don't think y'all caught what I just said. And you will see. S you. At some point, you, you gonna see, see you. another version yeah. of you, and something in you is either going to make you want to help that person become the you you've become, or your immaturity and your vengeful self is going to make them go deeper into that. People come through this door every week mm -hmm. battling something, dealing with something, and they're looking for us to stand up and say, I've been where you're at. Mm -hmm. You won't be a dead dog for long. Right. If you just step into the presence of God, and allow the presence and the atmosphere, the environment, the culture of the house to do what it's supposed to do for you. It will allow you to no longer see yourself as a dead dog, but a beautiful husky. I'm sorry, I like that. D, I hope that lesson sounds good. <laughs> but yeah, all right, so listen, let's wrap up. We're at the end of this. Let's go to the last verse. Uh, I love this. Uh, let's actually go to 11 because I, I feel something very powerful in this. Zeba replied, yes, my Lord is the king. I am your servant and I will do all that you have commanded. And from that time on, Mephibosheth ate regularly at David's table. Because when you help people be delivered from insecurity and from bad perspective, they become able to be themselves and they get comfortable. You should want people to be comfortable around you. Mm -hmm. He says, like one of the king's own sons, Mephibosheth, watch this, had a young son named Micah. From then on, all the members of Ziba's household were Mephibosheth's servants. And Mephibosheth, who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem and ate regularly at the king's table. I want to leave us with this. Our compassion and kindness 
is not just for Mephibosheth. Can I tell you something? You are not being kind to one person. What your kindness is really for is the offspring. God is not calling you to be nice just to Mephibosheth. He's calling the church to go after Micah. If we are not careful, our rudeness, our bitterness, our poor attitudes, our poor perspectives damage the generations to come. Mm -hmm. Look around the city of Las Vegas. There is a generation of Micahs who will never come to church because Mephibosheth was done wrong. Look at your family. There's a generation of Micahs that won't come to family reunions, won't come to family functions, won't participate in things. Some of you got some Micahs in your family, in your your household, who don't care about nothing you got to say. I'm after Micah. That's my assignment. Every time I come to church, I see an older person. I see a person that don't treat me right. I try to show kindness. You may not, I, I may not be the biggest fan of you, but guess what? I'm still going to show kindness. Mm-hmm. Because guess what? This ain't even about you. You lived your life. It's the ones after you. There's a lot of people, I don't think people take scripture serious, but the Bible says we get 70 years. And, and, and if you really are faithful to God, you may get 10 to 15 more. That's the Bible. Mm-hmm. Read the book of Proverbs. And Psalms. And Psalms. We got a lot of people who are very close to that 70. A lot of people who don't hit 70 because they treated Mephibosheth wrong. Mm -hmm. And they thought God wasn't going to, you know, keep tabs on that. They didn't think God would value how they treated people. See, people think kindness is something to take for granted. Mm -hmm. We like to tell people, you know, don't take my kindness for granted. No, you don't take his kindness for granted. Because the giver and the taker of life will remember what you did with yours. See, we worry about the judgment day. And forget, every day is a judgment day. That's right. He is watching what we do, watching how we handle people, watching what we do. One of the, I'm going to use Denise for an example. Denise, when she first got here, it was just so awkward. It probably is still awkward for her. It was just so, and I would just, I've made it my mission. Denise, how are you doing? Denise, what, 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 what can I do better? What can I focus on? How can I tailor the message? Is there something I can say a little bit better? Denise, is, is, is there something that you need? I just want to be I want it to be kind and compassionate to her. This is different. We are black. Latino woman, right? Latina woman. That is a different context, different experience. If you've never heard her story, you need to find out about her story. I'm, a, I'm not going to tell all of it, but that's not a person you should be rude to not because she's dangerous but because of what she comes from she don't need anything but love but care but compassion and people will come to this church and be looking and be looking and at just wrong you don't treat people like that that's a mafiba chef yep. and when god's trying to open a church to different cultures and different races, he's trying to say, I'm sending Micahs that don't look like you. Mm -hmm. And you'll mess over the blessing of the Micah that is unfamiliar to your context because you would rather have sameness than genuine encounter with my spirit. Let us remember as we close this Bible study to always be kind. Because you never know who you're talking to. I, I believe it's in the te- it's in the scriptures where it says you you got to be careful because you may be entertaining an angel. Mm, unawares. Unawares. Mm-hmm. There's some angels that God has sent that 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 have keys to doors you've been praying for, mm-hmm. and a bad attitude on the right day mm-hmm. may cause you to have a permanently closed door. Because you didn't want to get yourself together. I was in the Bible study. Read, you were there one night. I told people, I said, some days you've got to learn how to shut everything off, deal with you before you leave the house. If you know you ain't right, don't you go outside. Because guess what? Everything outside is going to catch every bit of you. 
And if you don't deal with you, you may close a door. But if you get yourself together, I have this rule. I tell my wife, baby girl, I need you to just let me be for a second. Because I don't want to give to you what isn't for you. And it caused you to have a bad view of me that should have never existed. May we all have that same level of wisdom and maturity when it comes to people we go to church with. And kindness. And kindness. Because I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know. And guess what? I'm not wrong for not caring to know. Because guess what? I got my own things to deal with. But what I would be wrong for is to take out what I'm dealing with on you. And we all need the same thing. And that's Jesus and his love. I hope that makes sense. Are y'all blessed by that today? All right, let's put our hands together. And so this season, this Christmas season Christmas that season. we are in. Kindness. We want to encourage you to, to invite some Mephibosheths to sit mm -hmm. at your table. Especially invite next week. Invite some, some Mephibosheths to sit at your table. Um, I have um, someone was sharing with me that, that they were asked, how do you get Miss Carmen to like you? Um, <laughs> I was like, wow. That is a very rude thing to it say. It is a rude question to ask, but it was asked. Um, you know, and I'm like, wow, how do, how do you, how do you get me to like you? How do you get people to like you? You know, be kind to people. Speak to people. Stop expecting people to be something that you're not. You know, the, be who you are. And if you want relationship, extend yourself. You gotta extend and yourself. stop expecting somebody who doesn't even know that you want to be in relationship with them to want to be in relationship with you. You gotta open your mouth. Yeah, and so it's just it's like, you know, I hear stuff like that and I go, why would you even ask somebody that question? You know, but we do stuff like that. We say stuff like that, and and we think we're right for thinking that way. Invite a Mephibosheth to your table. I might be Mephibosheth, and you have no idea. You have no idea. You just look at them, and you're going, that's Pastor Carmen, that's the pastor's wife, that's first lady, that's, you know, and so, and she has her whatever. And I do. I have my friends that I have shown myself friendly to, and they have shown themselves friendly to me. If you want to be my friend, show yourself friendly. And can I say this? And can we stop making leadership feel bad because they have their friends? And as I don't you, feel bad for as that. As if you don't have your friends? Yeah, I don't feel bad for that. Let people be friends with who they want to yeah, be I, friends I don't, with. I don't. What if you just not my person? Yeah. Can we just be honest about that? I am not supposed to, like, to, to expect people to just have to be your friend. Because this is the thing. We think kindness and friendship are, are the same, same thing. thing. And they're and not. They're not. Yeah. We ain't supposed to be friends. Like, friendship is a, a genuine, close connection. I tell you things about me that the public ain't supposed to know. I show you sides of me that the public ain't supposed to I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about vulnerability, transparency. There are levels of love that are birthed through friendship. And, and guess what? Especially for people, especially people in leadership and stuff, that ain't for everybody. It's not. Because if you extend friendship and that level of closeness to the wrong person, you could potentially be doing more destruction to yourself than you are doing, you know, actually, you know, um, good to yourself. And we got to stop making people feel like that. You didn't invite me to your house. I'm not comfortable. I you didn't let, let me cook for children. You didn't let me house. cook for you. You have cats. Yeah. I'm not. I'm. I tell people all the time. I'm not a. I'm not a. Um. Um. Animal, uh, animal person. person. So you know, if if we gonna go eat. It's going to be a good restaurant that I pick. I'm just being honest with you. And it, that's just, it's a preference. You got to honor people's preference and stop demonizing people because they have the same thing you do. You got a preference too. Some people like to cook with animals in the kitchen. I don't like that. Some people like to, you know, wear shoes on carpet. I don't like that. 
you put your shoes at the front door. Don't walk on my good floor like that. That's just, I have a preference. That don't mean I'm better than you. You're just not meant to be in my circle. Okay, I have to confess. Come on. Walk on you do walk on the carpet with, with your shoes, shoes on. It's all right. You know? Sorry. There's a special place in my heart for people like you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And that's just the truth. We make people feel bad because they have friends. And And it it just be jealousy. You just be just jealous. I I wish just just okay, you wish you could be my friend. Why do you want to be my friend so bad? What like what is it? Okay, cool. Let's let's see if there's something there. I had somebody call me last week. And I I don't because I don't give my phone number out. And I and I'm gonna tell y'all why. When you're in church leadership, People abuse access, and I've seen it all in my life, especially for, for me. I'm a community leader. I'm a business owner. I have um, a lot of stuff happening. I'm a husband, and everybody doesn't honor that. So people don't really believe in business hours, and then people don't believe in family time. So I don't really give my phone number out like that. You can message me. You can email me. You know, I'm not Hollywood. I'm just respectful of the fact I work really hard and I have a family. I like my family just like you may or may not like yours. So (laughs) in respect to that, I don't want people calling me all day because during my business hours, my phone's going off. And I had to explain that. And the person was like, wow, that's why you don't get your phone number out? When I tell you the next day, 6.45 a.m., I can't even have my own time to watch, you know, Skip Bayless. Hey, Pastor Kyle, I just wanted to see what you was doing. I just told you it's too much. Mm -hmm. But people think you're rude for that. No, it's just a healthy boundary. And, And we have to be okay. It's just a preference. Let people be who they are. It ain't wrong. It ain't wrong. Just like you got a friend circle, I got a friend circle. And that don't mean I hate you because you ain't a part of it. That's right. That's right. That's it. And so we want to leave it with that. Yeah. Um, invite somebody to your table. Invite somebody. Invite somebody to your table. Invite the very person that you would think would want to be at your table. Because that's probably the person that wants to be at your that's table. That's probably the person. That's that probably the person. And so this, and not just because it's the holidays. Let the holidays be your beginning, and continue it on. And if somebody says no, then move on to the next person. Move on to the next person. It's not rejection. It really it isn't. That, it just move on to the next person. But we want to show ourselves friendly. We want to show ourselves friendly, and we want those people who don't have anybody to know that somebody really does want to be in relationship with them. Amen? And so I hope that you all have enjoyed our Sunday school lesson. I told Kyle, be ready to teach Sunday school. He did a great job. Thank you, son. Yeah, no problem. Um, well, you know what? <laughs> Me and Kyle are going to work some things and, out. And bring, listen, listen can, we, can we do something? And I, I'm going to probably make a graphic for us. I want this month and next year, as we enter into this time, to be a year. Let's just start it. A Mephibosheth Chef challenge, oh, be where good. we where we purposely invite people to our t- to to our to our table. Our the church is a table. Invite people to the table. Invite people that would have mm-hmm. never thought you would invite. I know we all have our circle of people that we always extend invitations to. Invite strangers. Like next week, try your best to bring somebody, somebody to church. Just try. See what happens. Lisa's saying. I see somebody in the back shaking shaking her head. No, she's not ready for that yet. Pray for her. So special. So special. Um, And I want to extend it beyond that. Um, Sometimes in order to get somebody to come to church, you got to invite them somewhere else. Oh, my goodness. In order to actually get them to follow you here, See if they'll follow you somewhere else. See if they'll else. follow you somewhere else. See if they'll follow you to lunch. See if they'll follow you to breakfast. See if the, it's Christmas time. See if they'll follow you out to the Bellagio to go look at the decorations. Invite. It, it's not just this place. That's right. We want to get them to this place. Let them know that you live outside of this outside place. Outside of this place, yep. 
you can live outside of this place and still represent God. That's so true. And so that's, I like that, the Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth challenge. challenge. We're after Micah. Mm-hmm. But to get and then to Micah. We need, and then we need pictures. Mm-hmm. We need pictures. Take a selfie. Take a selfie. Let the people know. We're going to post it on the, um, on the board, and we're going to let people see you participated in the Mephibosheth challenge. Mm-hmm. So that's a good one, Kyle. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one, son. Well, I'm going to give you that. All right. All right. Give me some. All right. All right. Go ahead. So special. All right, y'all. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what your word does to us and how it transforms our lives. Father, I pray right now that a spirit of kindness would grip your people. Let your people know that they are safe. I feel that strong. Safe to be kind. There is a, um, a very serious thing where people feel as if their kindness is going to be taken for granted. And because there is a fear of being taken advantage of, people refuse to give themselves the opportunity to be led by you. Father, renew our commitment to surrendering our will to you and actually fulfilling the assignment that you gave us. Allow us to divorce every bitter vengeful, raging thing that may cause us to not be able to lead and love like you. Father, we love you. We thank you that you are going to allow us to love Saul's, to love Mephibosheth's, and lead Micah's. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. God bless y'all. Y'all have a great day. And go Cowboys. Good morning. I am Reverend Kelsey A. West, Senior Pastor at Nehemiah Ministries Christian Church located right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I want to personally stop and say thank you for being a part of our virtual worship experience. I pray that something was said and or done on today to encourage you to walk even closer with our Lord and Savior, Jesus. I'm going to also ask, say, man, if you would like to support this ministry, you may sow a seed of support, amen, via our various given platforms that were shared with you during our broadcast. I look forward to seeing you same time next week right here at Nehemiah Ministries Christian Church. God bless you.